Hey everyone, it's Lee Diprose here from Fujifilm Australia, and we're here at Six Strings Brewery with John Platt. Welcome Hi Lee, John. how are you? I'm well, good, I'm well. Good. Now, John has come from an industry um, which is well known to many people who share a passion in film and television, but basically you've come from a DOP background and a camera operating background, and you're moving more into a stills, on-set stills photographer. That's it, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey that you've taken to go down that road? I actually started in stills um, way back in the, uh, the late 70s, straight out of high school. I, I joined a, um, a commercial uh, studio in North Sydney. I uh, was there for about four years and then um, moved to another studio, uh, Ian McDonald Productions. Ian, the principal uh, of that studio, was just finishing off his last stills job before moving into directing commercials. And so I, my role there was to uh, help out the freelance photographers, assist them coming into the studio because of course Ian wasn't using the equipment anymore. But at the same time I became a runner on those commercials and I saw the other world um, yeah, okay. And I thought, well, hang on a sec, you know, these guys are getting paid twice as much as me. They've got all the travel. There's no overheads. Yep. And, and so that was, you know, that, that was a huge um, uh, carrot for okay. me. And I, um, I then spoke to uh, Paul Murphy, who was the in-house camera operator for Ian um, while he was directing. And Paul said, yeah, give it a go. So I then moved into the camera department, yes. Uh, put myself out there as a clapper loader, which is the, the junior member of the camera yep. department, yep. and worked my way up the, um, up the, the ladder wow. um, over the, the last 30 years. Um, but stills has always been the passion. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the film has been profession and the stills is the passion. So yep. I've um, kept photographing all through those years, you know, on set, behind the scenes stuff. Yep. And um, I've got, oh, 30, 40,000 images now wow, over wow. all that time and the, the various um, features and TV shows. And I had three years over in, uh, in Canada as well in Toronto working in their industry, yep. uh, which was great. Um, but uh, now it's come to the point where I just want to push the photography. I just want to stick yep. to the photography yep. and um, get into the onset stills and yep. have been um, pursuing that over the last 12 to 15 months. Yep. Uh, it's going well. Um, there's a couple of uh, three or four films, that, small films that I've done so far um, mm -hmm. and I'm absolutely loving it. Yep, uh, awesome. And uh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And you've obviously done features. Um, just recently you've done Mad Max and you've recently worked on uh, a film which was based in Western Australia, is that right? Last Cab to Darwin? Last Cab to Darwin, yes. yes. It, was, it was shot actually in Broken Hill. Okay. Uh, yep. It was an eight-week shoot, and we uh, we travelled from Broken Hill. We were shot in Broken Hill for three three weeks. Yes. Uh, we travelled from Broken Hill up to Darwin. Okay. Um, for uh, three weeks, and yep. then we had two weeks uh, in Darwin shooting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And those sort of conditions that you're shooting in, you're obviously using the Fujifilm XC1 for your shoots now. Can you tell us a little about the sort of gear that you do use on your shoots? Um, whether it's behind the scenes or now as a merging into this sort of field of onset still photography. Yeah. Um, can you, yeah, just take us through the lens choices that you go through and how the X-T1 really assists you in your shoots? I was really fortunate. <coughs> Excuse me. I was really fortunate. Um, I was working with a, a colleague, Zach Peel McGregor, uh, okay. on a film, um, Gods of Egypt, last year. And he had the... Um, the X100S, and I was really keen on that because with the 23mm, the 35mm equivalent, um, that has always been my favourite lens. Right, and okay. it goes back to the analogue days, the, the, the film days, yep. when I uh, always had to have the camera on my belt and a pouch on my belt because using my hands all day, I couldn't, couldn't carry a camera, it just, but it had to be there. Mm -hmm. I, had no, I never had any time to go and get it yep. um, because the moment was gone if I wanted to take a still. Uh -huh. So... I had, there were two cameras, uh, I always had two cameras in my belt, but there were two particular cameras that, uh, that I had. One was the uh, Konica Hexar, mm -hmm. which had very similar to the X100S, the 35mm um, uh, lens, F2 lens, mm -hmm. and I loved it. Okay. Then I was able to get a, a Leica M6, mm -hmm. and again, I went with the 35mm. Yep. X100S. 23mm, 35mm equivalent, small, compact, and it was the first digital camera that I was really interested in because it, because it was uh, 
so similar to those previous cameras that mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. when I was shooting film. Yep. And the size of it allowed me to have it on my belt. Yep. You know, um, the, the SLRs, the digital SLRs, they're huge. They're like bricks. Yeah. Right. So I can't carry those. It's always got to be somewhere else. Yeah. You know, yep. And again, you've got to go and get it. Yeah. And the, the, the moment's gone. So when I saw that, um, that Zach had that, I, I started playing with it. And then I realized that it didn't quite suit. And he has a relationship with Fujifilm himself. He, um, he and Duncan Hyde from Fujifilm okay. uh, know each other well. Mm -hmm. And he suggested to me the X-T1. Right. And I said, okay, so I'll, I'll have a look at that. And fortunately for me, he spoke to Duncan and Duncan very generously lent me one the last cab to Darwin, right. the X-T1, with the 23mm Fujinon yes. uh, F1.4. And it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's just amazing. It was, it was the camera that I've been looking for ever since I've been shooting digital. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, um, it's, it's small, it's compact, it's, it's rugged. Um, so many things about it I loved. Okay. Um, and, but back to your question, 35mm yep. is my lens. So John, with the X-T1, there's obviously a, a, a load of features on the camera. Are there some sort of standout ones that really help you in your job? Yes, the, yeah. the biggest would be the, uh, the electronic shutter. Okay. You know, the silent shutter yeah. is just, it, it changes everything in, right. in the onset world. Okay. Um, obviously, you're recording film. Yes. So up until now, uh, all the photographers have had to use you know, big blimps around their um, SLRs. Yeah, uh, what to, is a blimp? It's, it's yep. a uh, sound deadening device, Right. basically. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it just, um, it kills the sound of the, of the mirror yeah, slapping okay. up and down. Right. Um, I found that I could actually, even before the electronic shutter, I could shoot without a blimp with the X-T1 because the shutter is so quiet. Wow. There's, obviously there's no mirror. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it's, it's very quiet. Obviously if it's a studio and it's a quiet scene, perhaps not, but, um, you could, yeah, I did pretty well with, with it without a, without a blimp. Right, okay. With the electronic shutter, I never have to worry about a blimp again. I can shoot during um, the shooting of the film. Yep. You know, not just rehearsals, yep. not just saying to the first assistant director, once the take is complete or the setup is complete, I've got to grab a still. I can shoot while they're shooting. Wow. That's and so you've got that full um, range of emotion that, that the actors give yep. during the actual shoot of the of, of the film uh, you know there'll, there'll be a little bit reserved sometimes in the you know pull back a little bit on the rehearsals um, so you don't get those moments but with wow. electronic shutter so it's really a game shutter, changer can, absolutely yep. it is so john you've you've come from a big background of being a camera operator and a dop but now with your onset still photography can you sort of take us through some highlights that you've had in this new pursuit in career there's yeah, there's probably three. Yeah, at the okay. Moment. Yeah. Uh, it's early days with the with the onset stuff, but yeah. three special jobs were um, I shot all the uh, all the vehicles. Yep. For uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Wow. Um, wow. It was like a, a high end car shoot, and we had uh, seventy five vehicles in three weeks. Wow. Um, and it was it was wonderful. I had complete autonomy. Um, I could shoot them the way I wanted to. Yep. Um, and each one of them was a, a work of art and. I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity because, of course, you know, during the shooting of the film, a lot of them were destroyed. Yeah. Um, wow. I did, wasn't able to get the, the really big ones. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get them into the studio, but they, um, they, they built a, a six metre turntable wow. and we just drive them up and turn the turntable to the angle we wanted um, and a big, um, huge psych uh, and just, yeah, shot for three weeks. Wow. Fantastic. That's incredible. Yeah, incredible. it was. It was. The other one would be Last Cab to Darwin. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. um, to do that drive from, from Broken Hill up to, uh, to Darwin was yep. amazing. The, wow. the locations, um, the, uh, just in, enjoying that, that, that trip with, with the rest of the crew mm -hmm. uh, and shooting all the way, um, shooting in Lake Eyre. Um, I was wow. fortunate enough that um, we would, each, each morning we would um, have breakfast and then we'd, we'd travel. Mm -hmm. um, and, what I did with a couple of other friends who are also, you know, keen uh, photographers, we, we got up extra early and, and grab a 
uh, a bite to eat and headed off to, to Lake Eyre. So we got an hour and a half on Lake Eyre wow. before everybody else wow. got to us. Yeah, That's so awesome. had moments like that, which yep. was wonderful. And the um, colours there are quite vibrant. Oh, it was, it yep. was just astounding. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Did yeah. you find the Fuji really captured, captured that? I did. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, it was. It's a. It's a. It's an amazing place. It, and you know, I only had an hour and a half there. Yep. But it was just. It's. It's so vast. Mm. And to to capture that sense of um, space. Yep. Um, I you know always have someone in there to give it a a, a, a sense of scale. Yep. Uh, but and that's that's me. I you know I just love photographing people. Yeah. Right. Um, that's that's what I I love to do. Great. Um, and then a third one would be something I did last year, again with the X-T1, and again, the X-T1 came into its own here because yep. it was 12-year-old kids. Um, a class of, um, year 12 class, sorry, a year six class, 12-year-old, yep. uh, at, at the local Steiner school. Each year, that class six has the opportunity for a week, they make their own uh, deer hide drum. Okay. And so it's a, a, a full week. Yep. Um, Richard Littlefeather, is a Native American gentleman and he comes in and teaches them how to do this. Wow. But the interesting thing is that they think they're making a drum, which they do, but it's all the stuff that's underneath all that because it's a very difficult process okay. to, to do. Um, and they learn about themselves, they learn about their classmates. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. With the X-T1, I could just sort of embed myself in there. Um, and after a while, you know, after or an hour or so, they get used to me. You yep. know, it's like I'm not even there. Yeah, and okay. because it's so quiet, yep. the camera, mm. um, they, they don't even notice that I'm taking photographs. Wow. And you've got that wonderful um, viewfinder, yep. the screen, back screen, which, which flips out or, 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 or down if you're you know, high angle. Yep. Um, and then just hold it there and just you know, click away. Wow. And it's those just quiet moments. And it, I've got a, um, a book out of it. So um, yeah, that was, that was a real highlight. Wow. Um, not just from the imagery that I that I achieved from that week with mm -hmm, them, mm -hmm. but just enjoying the whole process with them and seeing them grow. Yep. You know, from the from the moment that Richard asked them, "What is it you would change about yourself?" and it's like, "What?" <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <You know? enough. laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. The, yeah. this is better. Make it a drum. Yeah, and yeah. and how they relaxed with that and opened up. It was yeah. wonderful. So yeah. the Fuji really allows you to get into that sort of space. It does. And be intimate. Yes. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now you're obviously shooting a lot, and you've had uh, maybe what. 40,000, 50,000 images that you've, yeah. you've shot. Mm. Um, with the Fuji X-T1, you're shooting raw, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. Can you t talk us through the process of what the final image is and how it's used within the industry? Um, well, the, the yeah. onset stills. Yes. You know, yeah. they're, they're used for primarily publicity, publicity okay. yep. to um, you know, promote the film. Right. Um, also, the, um, the behind the scenes style mm -hmm. photography yep. uh, can be used in, in articles uh, if if the director, the producers, you know, uh, have an article in a magazine, the director of photography, yep. um, that's where those, those shots would be used, but primarily it's for the publicity of yep. the film. And traditionally you would have seen those sort of shots taken from a digital SLR or possibly mm -hmm. even a medium format. Yeah. Um, you find that the quality of the X-Series and the x trans CMOS sensor, does that really stand out in those images? Can you see the detail in the photos in the final photos? Oh, the, look, the quality's there. There's, yep. there's no doubt. Okay. Uh, and I, I would... I would be surprised if anybody even knew that I wasn't using a full-size sensor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, and and the, the the camera, yeah, the, the the camera itself, the sensor, and the optics, yeah. Perfect. It's, it's, it's up there. Yeah, Great. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join me today sure. here and to learn a little bit more about your story. My um, pleasure. Now, where can people come and sort of see your work? Do you have a uh, website? website yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your website? Uh, Johnplatt.com.au. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's all I, there. I encourage people to go and check you out. Thank you. But thank you very much, John. Pleasure, mate. Cheers. Thanks.